Yeah, buddy. Happy Monday. I'm coming at you from the kitchen compound. The kitchen compound. Uh, I'm super excited about today. We have this streaming on multiple uh, platforms. So we have Facebook or YouTube. I'm looking at like a couple different cameras right now. <coughs> um, this is all going to be available on our YouTube channel as well. Um, so there's that. All right. So here's what I want to do. I want to talk to you guys about uh, something that I put up on my Facebook page uh, yesterday. So let you guys make comments and say, hey, this is what we want to talk about in, uh, in your Facebook Lives. And one of them was recovery. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But not only are we going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about the key performance indicators. So here's the deal. You need to have markers or measurements of success to see if you're actually getting better in your training. And, and we're going to call those KPIs or key performance indicators. And those are all substrates or they, they show the substrates of everything that you're doing in your training. So kind of like I said in the last video, dude. So here's the deal. This is all about just spreading the good word. There's no BS here. There's no, oh, I'm going to try to sell you this fitness program for $9.95 a month or something after this. Look, it's about impacting as many people as possible. And it's about getting everybody on the train of you weren't taught this stuff in school. Nobody was taught how to take care of their body. Nobody understands what the minimum physical requirement of daily life is. Nobody's preaching the same language. I say, hey, let's get fit. Everybody in the room says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but none of us are agreeing on it. So I'm not saying anything and you're not hearing anything. This is about getting the whole world on the same page and saying, look, these are the minimum physical requirements of life. You need to be able to do this to be a functional human. And in order to do that, you need to be able to do this, this, and this. And what are, our, what are my key performance indicators? What are the things that I need to do to be successful? Because that's what you want to do, right? Like the sum of all training is that you are trying to preserve something. And we call that preserving functional capacity. But oh, that's the strong side model for it. But you, you're trying to preserve something, whether that's the way you look or the way that you feel, or you're trying to preserve uh, like health or range of motion, that's the point of training. So I'm not going to argue today which exercise program you follow. Like keep that really open-minded. This is not about which exercise program you follow. This is about no matter what exercise program you follow, you know what it takes to reach the minimum physical requirement of life. All right, you got, you're, you're held to a responsibility as a human being to be fit. That is 100% a responsibility and a criteria of being a human being because so many other things are dependent on us. We, we have to take care of our world. We have to take care of our families. We have to take care of our jobs and our companies. Like you have to be fit. You also have to do things. You also have to pick things up and move things and, and like you're going to have to walk across the grocery store. Like, like sorry, that's just something you have to do. You're going to have to walk around the mall if you want to go get new clothes. Like I'm, I'm sorry, this is what you have to do. And those can't be difficult tasks. So it's about bringing everybody on board saying, hey, this is Strong Side Nation. This is about growing this thing and saying, we all need to get fit and we need to define what that is. And then when you're training, what we're going to talk about today, how do you know when it's working, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about your key performance indicators in training. <coughs> Sorry. And I'm, you know, I have my ways of training and things, but again, this is not about what you view as your best way to train. This is no matter what program you follow that these are your markers to see success. And I, I promise you it'll work in any training program. Number one is that you need to remember, before we go through any of this, you need to remember that our, our needs as humans vary in degree and not kind. So everybody needs the same thing. The degree in which we need that changes. And the degree is based on the goal. Are you trying to be a professional athlete? Are you trying to be a healthy 50-year-old? Are you trying to play a college sport? Or, you know, what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to run a marathon? That's, that's the degree in which you need. So like running, if you want to run to be a fit individual, you just need to run a couple miles. Like if you can run like two or three miles, you're, you're a very fit human being. But if you want to run a marathon, you need to run a lot more, right? So that would be an example of, Everybody needs to run or everybody needs to do cardiovascular activity to keep your heart healthy, but the degree is based on the goal. So <clears throat> as we go through these KPIs, all of this is about that our needs vary in degree and not kind, right? 
So here's the deal. There's a minimum physical requirement. And we talk about this all the time. This is what all strong side training methodology is based on. This is what all of our fitness programs are based on. This is what uh, drives our whole platform here at strong side is squat, sit up, and push up. To be a functional human being, you need to be able to squat, sit up, and push up. And anything that you train over that, anything you do over that, preserves that functional capacity for a longer period of time. We're all going to slow down, right? Every single one of us, as we get older, we're going to slow down. But we're trying to preserve that functional capacity for an extended period of time. And we need to be able to do that. Sorry, I had a pop up here. Uh, oh, no. Are we still going? Woo! Thought I messed up there. Okay, I'll edit that. All right, so anyways, back to it. Sorry, there was a pop up my computer. Um, but so as you're training and you're trying to preserve that, you need to be able to squat, sit up and do a push up. Those are the three minimum physical requirements to be a human being. If you can't do those three things, we need to get to work. All right. Because that means you're going to start losing functional capacity. You're going to go into a nursing home. So the way that you need to train is to preserve squat, sit up and push up. The more difficult the training or the more progression in the training, the more difficult the movement. So if you can acquire stronger movements, you preserve it for a longer period of time. So what that means is you need to be able to do a push-up. All human beings should be able to do a push-up. You know, like relatively, I'm saying all healthy human beings that aren't, that didn't have like a stroke or a shoulder replacement. Like I'm generally speaking here, all right? But you need to be able to do a push-up. If you can do a handstand push-up, then a push-up becomes much easier. And that's the preservation of your functional capacity. There will, there will become a drop-off. There will be a day in some point in your life where you can't do a handstand push-up. I get that. I get that. But it might be when you're 70. Like, are you serious? Like, through your 50s and through your 60s, you can do a handstand push-up, and then in your 70s, you can't do a handstand push-up anymore? You're still 70 with the body of a 45-year-old. That's amazing. And that's what we're trying to do, is to preserve that functional capacity. So it is your duty and your responsibility to train so you can preserve that functional capacity so everything else in life that you're responsible for can then be done and you don't have to worry about it. So you, there also needs to be a baseline of cardiorespiratory endurance. So you need to, as a human, you need to be able to go do a couple miles of physical activity. You need to be able to go whether we measure that in running, go run two, three miles, you need to be able to row for a little bit. Basically, you need to be able to sustain getting out of breath for 15, 20, 25 minutes, which most human beings can't do. Like literally that if, if anything were to ever happen in our life where we had to get out of breath and we had to pick up 100 pounds, we had to drag somebody across the floor for a fire, we couldn't do it. Like as human beings, we are, we are, we are dying in that sense. So there needs to be a minimum physical requirement of cardiovascular respiratory endurance, all right? So with all that being said, and those are your markers, that's what you're trying to train. You're trying to train so you can run farther, so the minimum requirement becomes easier. You know, you are trying to train to get out of breath, so when your grandkids, your kids, your friends, you whatever ask you to go to Six Flags, you're not going, I need a break, I can't ride the ride right now. And that's the preservation of functional capacity. And that's what you're trying to do. You have some factors here. So I spent a couple minutes explaining the point of training because a lot of people work out because they want to look better. They want, I get it, I, but those are byproducts. Like how you look and getting a six pack is not why you train. That's a byproduct of you busting your butt in the gym and in the kitchen. That's why we're coming to you from you know the strong side kitchen compound. But that's a byproduct of that, right? That is not what you do or why you do it. It's what happened along the way. So when you look at your training, your performance needs to go up. So all training is measured in your gauge of performance. Your performance needs to go up in the gym. That's how you know if everything you're doing outside the gym is getting better. So if you're able to do more push-ups this week than last week, if you're able to lift more weight this week than last week, if you're able to run farther this month versus last month, if you are losing weight, all of these are performance measures. Let's measure your biceps. Do, they, do you get more swole? You know, whatever. Like, all of those are measurements. Okay, that's our outcome. That's how we know. It's like if you're running a business and your business makes more money than it did last year. What'd you do? You improved. That tells you that the company's doing better. If your kid gets better grades because they've been going to tutoring, that tells you the tutoring's working. Like, these are measurement tools. But we get so focused in training about the outcome. You know, the old joke is like, 
I ate a carrot, I ate a carrot today and nothing happened. So this diet's not working. Like, no, you need consistency and you need consistency to see your performance markers, all right? There's three of them. So you have a minimum physical requirement of human life. Squat, sit up, and push up. You want to be a functional human, not go to the nursing home, be able to play with your kids, you know, work in the backyard, whatever the things that you would like to do to not detract from everybody else in your life. Squat, sit up, and push up. Then there's a minimum physical requirement of aerobic endurance. You need to be able to get out of breath for 20, 25 minutes and not have to worry about it too much. There's three factors, though, that tell us if we're going to be able to improve in those modules. And those factors are nutrition, sleep, and body care. Nutrition, sleep, and body care. And those are our KPIs. Those are our key performance indicators. So everything I've been talking about for the last like 10 minutes, <clears throat> if you want all that stuff, if you want that body, if you want that version of yourself, if you want everything that these platforms at StrongSide provide and all this training methodology that we have, if you want that body that's going to slow down slower, if you want that six pack, if you want the best version of yourself, you're going to have to look at three things. Sleep, nutrition, and body care. So sleep, nutrition, and body care. All right. Those are your three performance indicators. If those three things get better and are taken care of, then everything else that you want will come into play. If you neglect those three things, then you're going to have a really hard time no matter how hard you work in the gym or how much effort you give or what your consistency is like. The world is working against you if you're not on point with your sleep, nutrition, and your body care. So let's look at that. Then that leads to the next point. The next point is, and I'm going to come back to those, but the next point or the question is, is there a such thing as overtraining or undersleeping and undereating, otherwise known as under recovery? So are you overtraining or under recovering? All right, that's a good question. And I'm going to give you an extreme example. I'm going to give you the example of steroids. So why do people take steroids? People don't take steroids to get big and strong, meaning that they don't take steroids, or at least they shouldn't be taking steroids, thinking that that steroid will automatically make them big and strong. It won't. If you take steroids and don't work out, you're not going to get any fitter, and you're probably just going to get fat. All right, what steroids allow you to do is recover to 100%. Imagine if you could squat in the gym or ride your bike or run to a maximum dif distance with maximum intensity as hard as you could and then take steroids and the next day enter the gym and have no signs of fatigue. None. You could squat again. You could run again. You were never fatigued from the previous day's work. That's what steroids allow you to do and that's why people take them. They're still in the gym six hours a day absolutely busting their butt. So it's not a free pass, but you, you do get a little bit of advantage there. So that's, that's what I want you to think about. Like if you were to be able, if you have the ability to regenerate and recover to even half the amount of a steroid, don't you think that your progress would be better, right? Because that's what steroids do and they allow people to perform better. So the goal is to have an ancillary product to your training program that allows you to recover so much that you can come into the gym every day and do good work. We don't want you coming into the gym every day destroyed out of your mind and so exhausted that you're given 70%. Like I would rather have four days at 100% than seven days at 70%. You're going to get more out of the four days at 100%. And those 100% measures allowing your performance to go up into the gym come from sleep, nutrition, and body care. All right. So what typically happens in those three factors that we're going to look at of nutrition, sleep, and body care? Um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. But number one is that your factors typically need to go up or they need to increase in quality. So let's look at nutrition. I meet with a ton of people that want to lose weight, like a ton of people. I've done that my whole career. That most people enter the gym with some type of weight loss goal, whether that's a massive weight loss goal of 50 to 100 pounds, or they just want to lose five pounds to look a little bit better. Everybody's got some weight loss goal. I can't even remember, or and I don't even think there's ever been, and I definitely can't count maybe even one, that I've met with somebody and said, hey, well, looking at your diet here, uh, all you need to do is stop eating pizza, and you'll lose a bunch of weight. That, that's not what people do. Like if you're that bad off, like you're those people, my 600 pound life on TLC or whatever, that is such an emotional relationship with food. You're probably not entering the gym. 
most people struggle to lose weight because they're not eating enough. Definitely people that can't put on mass aren't eating enough. But 94% of people are under eating. And I know that sounds psychotic. And it sounds like, what? And we were taught that you got to eat less and exercise more. And I, I don't care what you were taught. Remember, Strong Side Nation, we're starting now. Okay, I'm going to be doing a video next week about how all calories aren't equal and the sleep and stuff like that. But look, if it was as easy as eat less and exercise more, if that's all you had to do to lose weight, eat less and exercise more, I wouldn't have a job. There is so much more that goes into that than eat less and exercise more. There's a whole slew of factors that go in there. And also, calories aren't calories. Like if I gave you 500 calories of chicken and I gave you 500 calories of cake, how come one's going to make you thin and one's going to make you fat? They're both 500 calories. That doesn't make any sense. So how can these units of measurement be created equal. Oh, eat this 1200 calorie diet and eat this many points and like, dude, that's what I said at the beginning of this. This is a no BS channel. This is about getting everybody on board with the right stuff that'll make you fit and creating a healthy life for Strong Side Nation. That's it. All right, so those are your factors. You're gonna need to increase your caloric volume. More than likely, you're not eating enough. Not only are you not eating enough, but more than likely, you're not eating the right percentages. So it's kind of like making a bunch of money, but spending it all rather than making a bunch of money and investing it. And what are you going to do with that disposable income to create more wealth? And that's when you start looking at your finances or your nutrition in a much healthier way. And you say, I need this many grams of carbs, fats, and proteins. I need an appropriate amount of volumes. So that's one thing to look at. And your nutrition is going to play 80% of your success. Like you can't out eat a bad diet. You guys hear that all the time. Dude, you, you can't. Like if your training is suffering, if you're not doing better week over week, you're recovering bad, you feel dragged down, like you're not getting any better, um, you're having a hard time losing weight, you're going to have to eat more. Like more than likely, I mean, I don't know what I don't like know you 100% right now, but I'm just telling you that more than likely you need to eat more. And I bet if you write down everything that you eat throughout the day, I bet you're eating three times and the kids are busy and you got a buzz out of the house, you might eat lunch, you have a granola bar, like whatever. At the end of the day, you had what 900 calories. Oh, forget about the thousand calorie burn you did in your workout. Like, okay, so now you're negative 100 calories, your body's not going to trust you to lose fat. I can talk about that all day long. Um, and we're going to do a fat loss video uh, next week as well. But you're probably going to need to eat more. At minimum, you got to pay attention to your nutrition. So if you want the minimum physical requirement of life to go up and you want to look at factor number one, it's going to be nutrition. Number two is sleep. So that's the video that we're going to do on Monday next week is talking about sleep. You need to recover. Most people are Waking up at night, most people don't sleep between 1 and 3 in the morning. Most people wake up to go to the bathroom. You aren't replenishing your melatonin pools. Your cortisol levels are through the roof. You have all this fight or flight symptoms going on. You're craving carbs and eating carbs, craving carbs and eating carbs over and over and over again. Like it's just this vicious metabolic circle of sugars and carbohydrates or and I'm crashing and I'm not eating and I'm tired because I'm not eating. So let me go drink all this caffeine to try to stay awake or maybe I need a nap. But my circadian rhythm's so off that I can't function on anything. Dude, you got to sleep and you got to sleep from like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. is the goal. And if you can't do that, we got to condense it. We got to talk about how to increase the quality, which is what we're going to do on Monday or this next uh, two videos from now. I'm going to put up talk about how to increase that quality. Number three is body care. So the other two points that I've talked about, I'm going to make separate videos on those because they're their own. They're their own topics. But number three, body care. We can, it's real simple. It's real simple. Just take care of your body. That's it. And here's what I mean by that. You bust your butt in the gym. I want you to think about how much, how much work it takes to get to the gym. You got your job. You got your kids. You got your family. You got your significant other. You got everybody pulling at you from every different direction. And somehow, because of your grit work of the goals that you have, I'm so proud of you, got to the gym. And you did amazing work in the gym. And I'm really proud of you. That's awesome. But then you work so hard that you didn't treat your body with anything and it went and crashed. You got to warm up and you got to cool down. And I know that's so cliche and everybody says that, but you'd be surprised that nobody does it. You need an 8 to 12 minute warm up and you need an 8 to 12 minute cool down. You want to look at injury rates of people that get injured. It, dude, it's like, like you can buy the most reliable car in the world, but if you don't take care of it, it's going to break down. 
And what I mean by that is everybody wants to blame exercise, that exercise hurts people. Like, oh, I don't want to, you know, oh, CrossFit hurts people. My buddy did that boot camp and he got hurt. Oh, my so-and-so went to Orange Theory and they rode too much and hurt their knees. Okay, did you show up five minutes late to the class, work really hard, and then leave as soon as it was over? Or were you there 15 minutes early warming up, going through the program, and then cooling down? Because I'm not saying that there's not bad coaches, but I'm also saying that if you buy a wonderful car and never change the oil, it's going to break. And you need to take care of your body. Because every time that you come into the gym, you're asking your body to get better. You're asking your body to preserve that minimum physical requirement. You're asking your body to get better. You're asking your body to progress in something that it couldn't do before. You're asking more and more and more. At work, if your boss asks you for more and more and more and more, but you never get a pay raise, aren't you going to get frustrated? It's kind of the same thing with your body. Like if you ask your body for more and more and more and more, but you never give it any more sleep, any more body care, or any more nutrition, do you think it's going to remotely care what you think and give you what you want? Absolutely not. So your brain and your body operate separately from each other. Your brain understands you're watching this video right now. Your body has no idea. It's just trying to recover from its last stressor and prepare for its next stressor. And it needs to be a lot of attention around your key three factors. And your key performance indicators are your sleep, your nutrition, and your body care. I can't tell you exactly what to do for those three of, for all three of those. I'm going to give you concepts to do for all three of those. Your concepts will apply to whatever exercise program you are following right now. And that's what's going to get you the best result. So I want you to look at your, at your minimum physical requirement. Squat, sit up, and push up. Why do you train? Every, every human on this planet, whether you know it or not, is training to preserve a squat, a sit-up, and a push-up. Because when you say, I want to get more fit, I want to get stronger, I want to get toned, I want to get leaner, I want to be healthier, what you're really saying is, I want to squat, sit-up, and push-up. I want to be able to do those three things and move and be functional and enjoy my life. Unless you're a professional athlete, you're, you're training. So unless you're a professional athlete, you are training to preserve your functional capacity, look good naked, and prevent against metabolic disease. That's probably why you're training, all right? So with those in mind, you need to look at your three key performance indicators, your KPIs, which are sleep, nutrition, and body care. And more than likely, if your training isn't going the way that you want, if your recovery isn't going the way that you want, you need to increase the volume, so the amount, or the quality of those three. So you need to either eat more and eat better, sleep more, sleep better, or take care of your body more, or use better implement tools to take care of it. We're going to cover these two topics starting next week, but that's what I want you to think about. Look at your key performance indicators. Strong Side Nation, let's grow this thing. Let's all get fit together. It's a no BS channel to make you as fit as possible.